you either invested and made money or you're still on the sidelines wondering, what's Bitcoin? Well, we haven't covered our new segment, Everything to Know. Of course, our topic today, cryptocurrency. And joining us live, Alameda-based financial professional with defined financial planning, Sam Gaeta. Sam, it's good to see you again. Hey, thanks for having me back on. Um, I know this is a challenge, but what's the easiest possible way that we could describe to someone what cryptocurrency is? Yeah, I think the best way to think about it is kind of a medium of exchange. Think about your dollars, right? You work, you get paid dollars, you use those dollars to buy things, goods and services. Well, cryptocurrency originally was designed to be a medium of exchange, just like the dollars. Um, the big difference is that there's no centralized agency or government controlling the supply, right? How much, how many dollars uh, versus like how many Bitcoins or whatever cryptocurrency is really the biggest difference uh, in this in this model. It's basically something of value that people are investing in and just like everything else that can go up and down. And it's been volatile. So what is the state of cryptocurrency today? Yeah, you know, it's behaving a lot more like an asset versus a currency. Um, and that's how we're thinking about it today versus maybe how we were thinking about it a few years ago, right? Um, if you if you invest in in the US dollar, well, the U.S. government kind of guarantees that that dollar is going to be worth a dollar tomorrow. Uh, this this particular structure, cryptocurrency like uh, Bitcoin, for example, well, you know that was up to almost seventy thousand dollars. Now it's down, hovering around thirty eight thousand dollars. So when you're thinking about, well, is this a store of value, right? Am I going to put my money? Am I going to denominate my dollars in cryptocurrency? Well, is it actually going to be worth the same value or more in the future? Well, year to date, that's not the case, and that's a concern with its basic use value. You know, it's more behaving like the stock market, mm. right? Stock market's down 10%, like the S&P 500. As of yesterday's close, I think cryptocurrency year to date's down about 15%. So it's behaving like that. It's behaving like a, an asset class versus a currency, if that makes sense. You're right, and that's a great way to explain it. So my question is, if you were advising someone who is the potential person who would be a good candidate to invest in Bitcoin or another cryptocurrency? Yeah, there's uh, there's two schools of thought here. One is uh, the, the Bitcoin camp, which is a store of value, a kind of a gold style investment, right? You would buy gold because you want to make sure that it holds its value over time. And gold has historically done that. Uh, Bitcoin is essentially a digital version of gold, and some folks believe that that's going to flip gold, meaning instead of investors buying gold to store value, they're going to buy Bitcoin to store value. The other school of thought is uh, the Ethereum-style uh, cryptocurrency, where they're, they're utilizing things called smart contracts, with help, which help uh, uh, transact business on a day-to-day -day basis, right? Right now in our in our in our system in our global monetary system you know uh, transactions are very complicated and it, it there's a lot of people involved it costs a lot of money to transact business and ethereum the whole idea behind that is it's going to make it much more efficient because it's using a software program it's using computers to do that decentralizing that structure so if you believe those two things you know it could be a good investment for somebody but i think about it the same way we think about any other asset Right? If a client comes into the office and we're talking about uh, investing in the stock market or an individual company per se, we don't recommend putting more than 5% of your total portfolio value in one thing because that creates too much unsystematic risk. Because Bitcoin or Ethereum or any cryptocurrency for that matter, you know, there hasn't been enough time to prove that that's actually going to do something of value yet. So it's kind of a risk, right? You have to think of it as a risk. I'm betting that this is going to be something in the future, um, and you don't want to take on too much risk. You don't want to put too much of your portfolio at risk in that scenario, um, because it's then, you know, the whole idea behind investments are tools to achieve specific goals in the future. And if you're putting those goals in the future at risk, that's going to be a problem. This is not the place to put your retirement money in Correct. <laughs> right before you retire. It's not the place to put money that you uh, will need in a few years. So it's right. It's some, to me, it seems like, and correct me if I'm wrong, something that if you have the extra money, if that's not going to change your lifestyle in a major way to invest, sure. Yeah, I, I would agree with that, right? It's, it's exactly... 
you know, it's just like a, if you're in the accumulation phase, you're growing your money currently, you have a lot of earnings potential, right? Like if you're young, you're earning a lot of money. And this is a this is an opportunity to invest in something, a theory that might pay off in the future in the accumulation phase. Well, when you get into the distribution phase or you're getting closer to utilizing this tool for, to achieve some goal for you or your family, well, then that's where we need to really identify risk, risk tolerance. Is this is this going to be something that's going to pay off based on the time frame at which you need to utilize this to generate some future result? Okay, Sam, this was very helpful. We appreciate it. Nice talking to you. Yes, thanks for having me back on.